Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study with Brother Monty Sears and myself. And uh, we welcome uh, several people that's, uh, of course, here that they tune on, or they tune in, I should say, uh, sometimes now and sometimes later. And, but uh, several from, uh, of course, over in Africa again. I was talking to one pastor from Livingston, Zambia. You know where that is? Yeah. And uh, asked him if he watched the... Uh, Live streams. Oh yes, I watch every one. We watch every one. Of course, there's a time change here. Yeah, seven hours or so. Yeah. He said, he said, you inspired me to continue my studies. And you know what he's done now? He's received a, um, oh, it's a, some type of a degree or acknowledgement from Saxton, Missouri about being a biblical professor. Can you get a hold of that? Wow. It's a small world. Saxon, mm -hmm. Missouri, it's not that far away. Yeah. Of course, yeah. This, this guy from Zambia also uh, took courses from Springfield. So, and then of course from us. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, the Lord has his ways down here. But tonight we're gonna not waste time, as they say in Africa, we're going to talk a little bit more about the, the resurrection of Christ and the validity of it. But first we'll start with the book of Job, chapter 19, verse 25 and 26. This is one of my favorite scriptures in Job. Good. He says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Isn't that amazing? Prophetic scripture? Yep. The uh, book of Job's the oldest book in the Bible. It was written before Moses wrote the Pentateuch. Yeah. And uh, so the uh, the knowledge of the resurrection, God mm -hmm. gave it to us and and uh, yeah. and you know, there's there's no losing this revelation once it's given to us. Yes, the question is asked, how did Job know these things? Well, as you said, it's a direct revelation from God some way. And uh, the Lord's always done that since the very beginning of time, even from Adam on. Right. It's just that uh, we haven't had all the records given to us in the Scripture, but enough to know that, that God does do these things. Yes, He does. So Job then was talking about the, the coming resurrection of the rapture, wasn't he? Mm hmm So it's in the Bible, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. But first, let us understand tonight that Christ atoned for all sin on the cross. We must accept that fact. That means all sin, past, present, and future. Right. I, I, I understand the past and present, but the future, I, I, uh, I struggle with that one. But the fact is, he did. Yes, he did. So we'll accept that and go by faith and let the Lord work things out. Now, not everyone is a recipient of the benefits of the work on the cross. Well, we, so have, that, to, we have to be willing to repent. And to accept Jesus as Savior and as Lord. Yeah, and what He did for us. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some yeah. some hyper grace teachers that teach that you know this forgiveness is just a blanket deal and you don't have yeah. to do anything. That's to what they're it. saying, right? Uh, that He atoned for all sin, therefore it's already done. But it's conditional as to being uh, uh, receiving the benefits right. of the atonement. Right. And that requires the new birth. And uh, then it's activated mm -hmm. on an individual basis. So what we're talking about is a personal experience of the benefits of the atonement that right. Christ did for us. He paid the price on the cross for us. That's top priority. That's how you get saved and uh, come into the family of God that way. But because Jesus completed his mission, he could legally resurrect, you know, but not for himself. It was for us. Right. So he came here and paid the price for us, and then he resurrected for us. Uh, but he could not have literally resurrected if he had made one mistake. That's true. So he had to be perfect all the way through. And we have uh, the facts in the Scripture that he did resurrect. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's go to 2 Timothy 2.11 then. So... Very important scripture. It is a faithful saying, 
For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So right. just as surely as he was resurrected, we will be. That's exactly right. So when a person becomes born again then, uh, they're resurrected then. But that's a spiritual application. Right. But Job is talking about the literal, literal physical, physical, yes. Mm -hmm. Which that's that's also included in the package deal. Yeah. Now, in order to be resurrected, uh, to live for it, it, eternal eternity in the glorified state, you must be born again first, and be in the spiritual kingdom first before we are put in the literal kingdom to come. Right. See, people don't understand this things, and really, it's not that difficult. No. It's just a matter of uh, slowing down and taking our time, and understanding what God is saying to us, and. Uh, He's big enough to tell us exactly what he wants us to know. Right. You know, man made in God's image, we're a triune being, spirit, soul, and body. We just have to apply the scriptures. And, Same you way. know, the literal physical mm -hmm. resurrection applies to the body. Being born yeah. again is the resurrection of our spirit. That's right. Like you mentioned. So, That's right. so we just have to rightly divide the word and mm -hmm. apply it appropriately. And walk in it. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit helps us do that, of course. Galatians 3.27 is, is, is a verse that got the Africans going for quite some time and they're still going about this verse. And we'll, we'll try not to go too far into it, but just mention it. Okay. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. <laughs> All right. Not into water, into Christ. That's exactly right. So when does that take place for a person then? When you're born again. That's right. And then water baptism mm -hmm. later testifies yeah. to what happened. That's right. So read that verse again. Let's take it now literally for actually what it really means here. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ okay. have put on Christ. So when a, when a sinner is baptized into Christ, they're born again. Right. And they put on Christ and they're saved. Mm-hmm. Water has nothing to do with it. Right. It's the Holy Spirit that baptizes the sinner into Christ and mm -hmm. they become a saint. That's right. Not a sinner saved by grace. Can't prove that with the scripture. So that's, that's really a uh, false teaching. Mm -hmm. We just need to be up front and say it like it is and you can decide. But decide using the scriptures, not your own uh, preconceived ideas about what you think it was. Yeah. So teachers... Uh, uh, have a tendency to rub people wrong, but then they want to lead them in the right direction, which is the teaching gift, as that's what the purpose is. All right, so Romans, 4, Romans 6, 4 then, sort of another verse here. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. That's what I'm saying right there. To walk in newness of life right now, uh, a person must be born again, mm -hmm. or there's no new life to walk in. No. Uh, but secondly, of course, this guarantees the coming uh, resurrection. Right. And you see, because Christ arose, then we will. Mm -hmm. That's really what the Bible is teaching us here, which is the absolute truth. And uh, can't be disproved, so we accept that. And uh, those that have been born in the Spirit of God... They know for sure Christ resurrected. That's right. But you know what? I've got a good feeling the whole world knows that. Maybe they don't know God like uh, a Christian does, but they know there is a God. Yep. And somehow or another, it's in man to know about the Savior. I think, uh, well, we were, we were made in God's image, and, and uh, when God created man, he put a place in, in mm. man's heart for himself, and... And when that's so, empty, mm -hmm. it, you know, that's, why, that's why men seek after different things. And, seek uh, after God. Yeah. And mm -hmm. those that don't seek after God seek after mm -hmm. worldly things trying mm -hmm. to fill that emptiness, and, yeah. and it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. But it seems to be a, a vague sense of knowledge in everyone that there is a creator. Mm -hmm. So the heavens declare it, so forth and so right. on. Right. Uh, okay, all right. all right then, so Colossians 3, 4, then Paul continues with this, and we'll try to get to the resurrection here. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. 
That's what I was talking about. So Christ had to resurrect before he could come back and appear in the air. Right. We're on that here in the last few messages at the church. Mm -hmm. So there's no question about it that Christ arose. Now Christ's resurrection proves the scripture is true. Yep. See, we haven't believed some fairy tale that uh, the prophets uh, had stated about. We're not believing some fictitious, made-up scheme here. Uh, who could think this up? O only God could <laughs> uh, kick a plan like this in motion and then bring it to pass right. thousands of years after it was mm -hmm. prophesied. Yeah, and fulfill all yeah. those hundreds of prophecies right to the letter. Only God can do it, which is evidence. So because Christ resurrected, not only does it prove the scriptures, but it sets the stage for miracles anytime God wants to do it. Mm -hmm. And we need to get ready. We need to get ready for it. We need to be ready because you never know. Uh, just like that, the Lord will want to do something right. miraculous and we need to be ready to say, okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Not shy away from something that's supernatural because... It needs to be a supernaturally natural, like Sid Roth says. <laughs> All things are possible because of the resurrection. You know, there is nothing not possible. And the evidence is Christ is resurrected. He said, I got all power. He resurrected. He went back to sit, sit at the right hand of God. He sent the Holy Spirit here. So. Who has all power. Yeah. Yeah. So nothing is impossible. To those that believe. And, uh, of course, we need to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. Actually, from my viewpoint, I think you need to believe four things in order to, to, to be saved for sure, for sure, for sure. That Christ was crucified on the cross for our sins because of our sins. He was resurrected for our justification, right? All right. He ascended and sat on the right hand of the Father as our great faithful high priest. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, See, what's the other one? Uh, he was glorified. So he was the first fruits right. from the dead. And so if he's glorified, then he's exalted. That's, that's the fourth point. Um, so those four things you must accept, that Christ is not some shepherd boy out here. You know, I've got to stay out of the preach. I just want to uh, talk about this. <laughs> he's not a shepherd boy, but he's the king. That's right. And we need to accept him as that. And... He's not only Savior, but He's Lord of all and God. He's God. You must accept the fact that He is God. Not was, He is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He came as yeah. the suffering Messiah, weak mm -hmm. and low, meek and lowly, but yeah. once, he, uh, once He had victory on the cross there and was resurrected, He's now the King it. of kings. And, yeah. and so, uh, you know, the, the prophecies in the Old Testament mm -hmm. uh, prophesied both things, the, the humble servant mm -hmm. and the conquering king that's right and uh, yeah, that transition right. yeah. was made on the cross so he's just waiting for the time to be fulfilled so he can return and, uh, oh god's got a big big plan and it can't be stopped no satan can't stop it or he would have stopped it by now yeah <laughs> so he just more or less a puppet in my view the evidence uh, about the resurrection of christ now uh, first off we have the empty tomb mm-hmm you know, the tomb is still empty. Um, now, there are those that say that the, the disciples stole the body. And of course, we were on that, uh, different uh, views about uh, uh, the lie of the resurrection. But some say that the disciples stole the body. Now, if the disciples stole the body, then why were the grave clothes left behind? Yeah. <laughs> and, and the Roman guards. Yeah. Uh, you know, were there guarding the tomb. Yeah. Why weren't they killed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, uh, here's the deal. Either it's all true. If the resurrection is true, it's all true. Mm -hmm. I get it right. Now, if he didn't resurrect from the dead, then... We may as well uh, throw these yeah, Bibles away and go uh, to the bar. We're going to be nothing like a dog and die and that's it. <laughs> yeah. But we know better. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. No, mm -hmm. I, I, <laughs> no way, no way. Let's look at John 20 and verse 6 to 8, and then we'll pause and go to verse 9 after we talk a little bit about this one. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. 
Mm -hmm. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. You know, that other disciple, of course, we know was John. Right. But I find it interesting that he doesn't call his name. He doesn't say, the most famous, elite, greatest apostle of all. The most yeah. major archbishop, prophet of all. He doesn't even mention his name. Now, mm -hmm. what is the contrast between this and today? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a dead giveaway, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. But back on this, uh, if they would have stolen the body, then the grave clothes would have remained on the body. Right. Now, here's the thing about the grave clothes, and not many teach this. This is what, what I believe is the... They anointed the, the, the corpse of Jesus with uh, over 100 pounds of salve, ointment. Mm -hmm. So they wrapped him like a mummy. And then they anointed the whole thing. But in a matter of a few days, it dried. Yeah. So when the disciples went in to see uh, the, the linen, it wasn't just some sheet threw over him, but it, it was like... They can look inside. There's a image of a body there, like but there's nobody inside of this thing. Like an empty mummy? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> really, I mean, TV doesn't depict it this way, but this is the way that we see it. It would have dried. So how do you get out without disturbing, uh, you know, the, the, the surroundings and the, the cocoon? Well, how do you get out of the grave? See, the whole thing's a miracle. Yeah. Yeah, the stone wasn't rolled away for him to get out. The no. stone was rolled away for the disciples to be able to see in. And they came, they came in and they saw this. Mm -hmm. Now, you've taught this before over the years that the napkin was, uh, you know, laid aside. So who did that? Well, it had to be Jesus. Yeah. So he, he wasn't in a hurry to get out. So he, he got out of the cocoon and he folded this thing up and laid it over there. Right. See, the disciples didn't do it. The angels didn't do it. So Jesus did it. Right. And there's a lot of typology here we'll not get into, but uh, the fact is that we need to go to verse 9. That's, that's what we need to do. <laughs> okay. For as yet they knew not the Scripture that he must rise again from the dead. That's the strangest thing. Jesus told his disciples, hey, I've got to go away. Yeah. And I'm going to be killed. I'm going to resurrect and this and that. And they didn't really believe it. They didn't remember it. They didn't. No. Uh, must not have really listened that close. In a shocking situation like that, I doubt if we would remember what he said. Probably not. But uh, they knew not the scripture that he must rise again. He had to because his finished work on the cross was completed and therefore the underworld couldn't hold Jesus in paradise. Amen. That's the deal. That's right. So he came out. Amen. And you know, the church exists because of Jesus' existence. I want to say that again. Uh, the church exists today, the real church, mm -hmm. not some, some church founded by, you know, some man. But the real church of Jesus is, exists because Jesus exists. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. If he didn't exist, then there wouldn't be any New Testament church. No. I mean, the, the, the scriptures compare the church to Christ's body. And Same. in mm -hmm. order for the body to be alive, the head has to be alive. Yeah, he's the head of the church. That's right. Now, that's an evidence the church is still here. Uh, I know there's a lot of imitations and fakes, but uh, the real church is somewhat mystical, or maybe I could say it's a mystery. Mm -hmm. You know, you go all over the world and uh, there's believers. Right. But they may not appear as believers like we think. They're still born again, though and they still know the Lord. In other words, they don't fit into our American mold of what we think a Christian should be like. True. Uh, a Christian is simply a believer in Christ. That's what he is. Yeah. Or she. That's what, that's what they are, believers. Amen. So the church exists because of Jesus, and uh, then we have some eyewitnesses. We'll just touch on a few here uh, in Luke 24. Quite a few scripture here to read, <laughs> verse 22 to 32. Some eyewitness accounts. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when mm -hmm. they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, 
which said that he was alive. Yeah. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Let us stop right there. <laughs> <quite a> sermon. <laughs> Let us stop right there for a minute. <laughs> the whole Bible. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> could you imagine that? I'd, I'd love to hear that sermon. <laughs> uh, it hadn't been heard yet. I mean, uh, Stephen was pretty close here. Yeah. But then uh, all the scriptures concerning himself, uh, that's too much to, for a mortal to comprehend, but they heard it. They heard it. Can you imagine mm -hmm. that? Yet they were walking. They walked several miles. Yeah. And they didn't know that the one that was expounding the, the scripture was him. Yeah. They didn't know. They didn't it. recognize him. That's strange, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, were their eyes beholden, or did Christ uh, appear in a different form? Yeah, I've wondered that myself. Don't so know. we don't know, do we? Mm -mm. Well, the Holy Spirit knows. All right, let, let's go ahead here then. And they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would, would have gone further. But hmm. they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and brake and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures? It's just almost too much to... Not only did he open the scriptures, he opened their heart. Yeah. See, that's, that's the thing. You know, preaching and teaching is good, but if the Holy Spirit doesn't open your heart to receive the truth, then it falls by the wayside. Mm -hmm. So we need to begin to believe God to open up all of our hearts more so we can receive more yeah. revelation of the risen Christ because the risen Christ, excuse me, because He's beyond mortal man's comprehension. You can't wow. explain Jesus in just an hour or ten hours no. or a year. It can't be done because he's more than that. All right, so the last, uh, the next to last verse is uh, what Paul said about the risen Savior in 1 Corinthians 15, 6 to 8. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. Yeah. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. So there's an eyewitness account right there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 500 brethren at one time, uh, I assume that was when he ascended. I would think, probably. Uh, there was a big crowd there, mm -hmm. and uh, they watched him go up. Yeah. So we have to we have to believe what the scripture says, and and uh, I don't have a problem with it. No, huh? I would love to have been there and watched him go. I tell you something greater than that, though. We're probably going to be the ones that, that see him come back. That's even greater. Yeah. Uh, now, when he returns, uh, not ever I will see him. Then hmm. he'll stop in the air. We we're on that last Sunday. But at the second coming, ever I will. Well, it's going to happen because it's been prophesied it would happen, and uh, I believe what Paul said, absolutely, without, yeah. without question whatsoever, that he saw him. The disciples saw him, the 500 brethren saw him, some of them were falling asleep. The thing about this, uh, most of the first church that were eyewitnesses, they were martyred. Yeah. I mean, terribly tortured to death. Uh, normal person wouldn't die for imposter, you know that? No. Uh, now, if they knew it was a lie, they wouldn't yeah. have given their life for it. And, and John saw the Lord on the cross die. Mm -hmm. So, could you imagine that? He walked with John the Revelator. He walked with Jesus three years on the earth or more. And then he was there when Jesus died on the cross with Mary, Mary Jesus' mother. And then he sees the risen Christ. Yeah. Then 
He's put on the Isle of Patmos, and here comes the risen Christ and gives him the book of Revelation yeah. to write down. Can you get a hold of that? I, no, I can't. That would, it's, uh, <laughs> my mind just blows. It just <laughs> what really gets me is he was in the spirit of the Lord's day, and you know he wasn't treated very well, yeah. prisoner. And yet, see, we don't understand that uh, we're not of this world. If you're born again, you're born from above. That's what the Bible teaches. And it's a good thing because Jesus lives... We live. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I'll even go a little bit further in, in, in a little bit of speculation here that I don't think anyone dies physically until he says, or he wouldn't have all power. True. I mean, the unsaved. So he knows all there is to know by the Holy Spirit. And uh, Now sometimes, uh, as we're going to Romans 1, 4, the last scripture tonight, uh, sometimes it seems to me that the grace of God supersedes or overrides his judgment because he knows that a Christian may stray too far and backslide and lose his or her soul, so he will allow physical death to occur to make sure that soul gets to heaven. That's what I think. Uh, that's the grace of God working. Well, didn't Paul tell him to turn that one person over uh, to the mm -hmm. devil? Mm -hmm. For the destruction of the flesh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it could have happened that way. Mm -hmm. So God wanted to save him. See, the Lord loves people, but then He don't want them to wind up in the underworld, lost forever. Uh, so He might permit a premature physical death in order to save that believer that's going to backside and lose out. That's what I'm saying. You compare a Which, few years on this earth oh, to eternity in hell. It doesn't mean anything. It's still you know. a good deal. Oh yeah. <laughs> So the Lord's good no matter how you look at it. Yeah. The resurrection, conclusion tonight, the resurrection proves the deity of Jesus. Yes. He even knows about that train coming through. And uh, so we'll just wait and enjoy the sound. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really like the sound of that. Yeah, I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. I don't know if they can hear the <laughs> oh, yeah, whistle they can, yeah. on the on the, yeah. camp, the They can hear it. They yeah. can hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> It's a wonderful sound, isn't it? <laughs> well, Isaiah said, he saw the, high, the Lord high and lifted up. Yeah. His train filled the train temple. Filled the temple. So. Unfortunately, it's not talking about a locomotive. <laughs> <laughs> Some people, toot, toot, you know, they think it's what it means. No, no, that's another subject. The resurrection of Jesus proves he's God. That's what I'm saying. Can't be disproved. So you must accept him as God. Isn't that right? Amen. What did Thomas say? My, my Lord and my, my God. My God. That's it. Of course, Jesus appeared in the glorified state in the upper room and, and showed Thomas his hands and his, his side. Then Thomas fell down and I'm sure hugged them and nailed the scarred feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I'm going with Thomas. He's not a doubter anymore, I no, guarantee no. you that. Huh? <laughs> he became a great preacher of the gospel, I'll tell you. So the last verse tonight is Romans 1, 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. There it is. Yeah. His there resurrection declared His Godship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The resurrection from the dead. Not of the dead. Right. So He arose... Amen. That's what's going to happen uh, when the rapture takes place in the immediate future. Uh, the dead in Christ will resurrect from the dead. So when we conduct funerals, mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking about Job, and we're through here tonight. Uh, Job had to endure ten funerals. I'm going to be on that Sunday. Ten <laughs> funerals. Can you get a hold of that? Sons and daughters. Oh, yeah. I think he was tested... More than any man I know besides the Savior, but uh, he made it through it, which lets us know we can make it through. Yep. We have the Holy Spirit to help us today because Christ arose. Another evidence is that he sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he sent the power, and the power uh, envelops and involves the church, and we're glad for that because by the grace of God, we're in the church, the body of Christ. So... Thank you for listening tonight, and we're, we hope that you received a few things from the Scripture. Uh, the Scripture is the most important thing. 
uh, that we, we speak about and, and read and discuss because it's infallible truth. Amen. And our soul depends upon it. That's true. The integrity of God uh, can't be, uh, you know, done away with. Mm -mm. So we trust the Father God, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, if you're not a uh, Christian, you need to make your commitment to Christ Jesus. Uh, you can email us or, uh, I guess, Messenger is still in effect. Is that right, son? Mm -hmm. And you can get a hold of us. And appreciate you listening to us. And Lord willing, we will see you next time. Bye.